Hey guys, I'm Chris Ignato, and you're watching my YouTube channel, so thanks a lot for that. Now, my brother and I were walking around, and I step over this thing and just keep going, and my brother looks down at it, and he's like, what's this? You know, it's really vibrant. And I'm like, it's just a green briar stem. And we look closer, and it wasn't. A rough green snake. Really cool snakes. Now, this is just a young one. These, these snakes grew up to three feet long. Now you can tell the difference between a rough green snake and a smooth green snake from their scales. The rough green obviously has keeled scales, whereas the smooth does not. Also, the rough green snake has larger eyes than the smooth green snake, which is interesting because they're a diurnal species, meaning that they're active during the day rather than at night. Now green snakes are actually the most arboreal snake within the region, and that's interesting because their region is quite large. They like to feed on insects, you know, sometimes little amphibians, little salamanders and frogs and stuff like that. But they'll hang out in branches over the water, and when an insect or something flies by, they'll just grab it right out of the air. That's how fast they are. But here's something really interesting. They don't have any teeth. Um, so to be able to acquire your food without any teeth, that must be, you know, a highly skilled snake right there. A lot of these snakes are being captured every year. And they stress easily. They One, they don't like open areas. They like tons of foliage. Two, they don't do well in a cage. You'd have to have a huge tank filled with tons and tons of branches. And even then, it can stress so much that it'll just die or it'll stop eating. But the really weird thing is, is if one of these dies, and I'm sure people in the pet trade are the ones that found this out the most, they turn blue. Sometimes they'll turn black. And people will see this dead black snake on the ground, a little one, they'll think it's a dead baby black racer. It's actually a green snake. You almost never see them, even though they're very common, because they're extremely camouflaged. And if something comes by and sees them, or they see something, you know, something comes by and they they're, feel threatened or afraid, they just freeze. They rely on their camouflage for their primary defense. They just sit still. And you overlook it. It just looks like the, the stem from a greenbrier or any number of plants, and you just overlook it. You know, I've been in their habitat tons of times, and I've never seen them. I'm sure I've overlooked tons of these snakes. Really cool looking now. Now when we release this little guy, we have to release him exactly where we found him. If we let the snake go in the territory of another one, the same species, they could fight each other. You know, it's competition, food resources, habitat, you know, shelter and everything. So when you let a snake go other in a place other than where you found it, it can actually uh, cause a lot of harm because it has to move through the territory of other snakes and they get in fights. They'll often stop eating until they get back to their home territory. Like rattlesnakes, if you release them 10 miles away from where you found them, they'll actually try to migrate back 10 miles. They'll stop eating and everything trying to get back to where their habitat was and somehow they know but um they get in the fights with the other snakes that own those territories and it's a lot of stress on the animal you're actually causing them a lot of harm when you're doing that the best thing to do is just release it a hundred yards one or two hundred yards from where you found it that way it's still relatively in its home territory and it won't be next to your house if you're trying to get rid of it because you're afraid of it